first state your name in your institution and then mention your question. <coughs> it seems that we were very clear. That's also a good sign. Uh, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, Alan Farrell at Goldman Sachs. Um, Thomas, uh, thanks very much for talking us through your new planned issuance in the ESTA market. Um, the IB obviously a very high profile issue in bond markets globally, as you mentioned. Is it your expectation that the floating rate note market in Europe will transition from Euribor to Esterlinked? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's an important question. Um, it, uh, the euro market is different here than, uh, than the, the LIBOR markets. Uh, we, we know that we, um, uh, the uh, LIBOR is, is meant to, to, uh, to stop at some point, and then uh, it's quite clear that we have to go to overnight. But in euro, we have these two uh, dif different possibilities to uh, have floating rate notes based on euro LIBOR or also on, uh, on euro SDR. Um, I would. Um, but there's another kind of maybe another kind of prob uh, problem with with the euro floating rate notes at the moment. In Europe, interest rates are super low. That means uh, many many institutions, if they try to issue a, a floating rate note at par, you would have to get into the area of negative rates. And unlike in the derivatives markets, in the in the bond markets, uh, negative rates are, are not really possible. So it means in, in uh, on bonds, you have always a kind of a, a floor uh, at zero, which is which basically also drives us to apply a large spread to uh, Euro SDR and to issue the bond at, at a premium to par. That's, but that's a kind of a, a technical side effect, which makes Euro somehow special in the, in the, um, in the currency spectrum. Um, but, but you asked for, for future uh, floating rate notes markets in Euros. Um, it's difficult to, say, to see. We, we will have two benchmark rates. One is Euro one is Euro SDR. In principle, both are available uh, for, for transactions. And um, uh, I think it's, um, it remains to be seen which one uh, will, will, will fly, fly, fly best. Yeah? And uh, Euro SDR is, uh, uh, I think it's, it's, the good thing is, it's, Euro SDR is, is really used also as for, the standard, for standard discounting. Uh, Euribor uh, probably less so, uh, and um, so I think that has some advantage for Euro SDR. But in principle, both things are available. Uh, we try to uh, support the, the 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 new rate to, to let that going. And uh, thanks for the question. Okay. Hmm. Any further questions? In the middle. Okay, I'm Michael Hemmer from BDO Austria, uh, and uh, there's uh, uh, following comments that I would like to make. First of all, I mean, a lot of people claim that the UI bar, as it still uh, continues to exist, will cannibalize on, of course, establishing a uh, liquid market for the ESA, because when you take a look at other uh, currency areas, you see that they do not even retain their LIBOR rates, and still they struggle. Uh, to build the volumes in uh, software, Sony, or whatever, and so on. So this is very difficult. I'd like to hear your view how much this will impact, this cannibalization of within EU IBO. Uh, and the second is, you mentioned it a little bit, uh, regarding foreign exchange markets. I think interest parity, I think, is a big topic. I haven't seen that this was addressed so far that much. Because, of course, this will support ESTA clearly. Because I think if you have interest parity considerations uh, on your forward FX rates, uh, then you can only use ESTA and not your in the future. So how do you deal with that? Are you working closely with other currency areas in order to figure out how the effects will be on that? So this is what I would like to know from the panel. So taking a good example, asking two questions in one. Uh, <laughs> on, the, on the latter one, uh, maybe I can answer it as part of the working group. So we are actively working with, with the other jurisdictions, with the other currencies, especially on, on these kind of conventions, what to do, with cost currency contracts, but to do with FX. And, and we try to come with, 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 with conventions that are consistent and, and, and help the market uh, and also give clarity to the market. Uh, the other question was more on, OK, what about is there sufficient room for two benchmarks, uh, Euro SDR and, and, and Euribor? I think Olga, you already gave uh, an answer. It, 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 uh, looking back, 
it seems possible eh, because we currently have still an, an, a liquid OIS market and also a liquid Euribor market, uh, uh, I would say. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 is, uh, uh, it remains to be seen how the market will e evolve uh, going forward. So I think it's a fair question, but it's also yeah, something that we will have to see once these markets grow. Yeah, but but of the course, there are different benchmarks because one contains a credit quality component, actually. So yeah. no, but that's, see what that's, the market will like, yeah. yeah. Will no, but that's indeed, uh, that's indeed uh, one yeah. of the driving elements. Yeah. Okay, thank Thanks you. for the question. <laughs> Any more questions? Ah, then we are clear. Berkeley, so thanks a lot. Uh, uh, we now I have to shortly announce a very short technical break. I think we I have to go to the makeup now, uh, <laughs> uh, and then we'll reconvene in, in two three minutes. So please remain near your seat because we will reconvene quite quickly. Thank you.